Good morning. I'm just going to do a, a quick bit on the next stage of the chili diary. So as you know, I've harvested all the chilies now. Um, I've got the packages, they're all in the freezer, so they're all nice and safe. So the next thing is doing the chili sauces. So I'm going to do something I've not done uh, before. When I've done my chili sauces previously, I've used a fermentation system based around kilner jars. So these are just a normal kilner jar with a floppy lid. Um, and what you do is you put your fermentation in the jar, lock it down, lock it down, and leave it to ferment over the course of a couple of weeks. Now, because of the way that the fermentation works, the, um, the ferment is gonna give off a hell of a lot of gases that will build up within the jar. So what you need to do every day is open the lid and do what they call burping it. And literally, when you open this lid, there's a load of big rush of air bubbles and loads and loads of gases come out, blah, 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 blah. which is all very well good. But what it means is you're opening this lid every time and you're getting the, uh, the, the, the possibility of getting a contaminant in there and ruining the whole thing and making people ill. So this year I'm trying something a little bit different. There's a brilliant YouTube channel. Um, there's a fella called The Chili Chump who uh, has been doing this sort of stuff for years and I've copied so much off of him, he's really, really cool. So this is um, something he recommended on one of his videos, so I thought I'd give it a go. So these are um, a plastic jar called Sun Pet. You can get them from Amazon um, and they're very, very cheap. This is a two litre jar. So what I've got is they come with these um, normal lids, so there's no hole in it, no valve in it. Um, and what you do is you drill a hole or you get someone who knows how to drill holes to drill them for you. Thank you very much, David. Um, you put one of these little rubber grommets in it and then you get one of these. Now this is a great bit of kit. This is um, a fermentation valve. I'm just trying to see uh, if you can see it right. So what you'll see is there's like um, a pipe rising up through the middle and there's a little cup you'll see moving around inside it. Um, you put some uh, some of the brine in the cup and then what's going to happen is the gases are going to come up this tube up the middle, they're going to lift the cup and the gases are going to escape uh, into the uh, into this into this valve. So in effect, and the, the gases all escape through the very top, so these little, little baby pinholes and stuff. So what this means is once you've got this done is you don't need to be doing the burping every day. So what you'll end up with, Blue Peter, is one of these. So this is the whole thing that you've seen with the valve hole and with the valve. And you'll see that grommet is airtight there. And inside, you can see it's just got a little opening at the end to let the gases out. So that's what we'll get. So um, I've been a bit ambitious, which is unusual for me. Uh, so I've got, six of these one litres because I bought these first not realising they were one litre and not two litre um, and then I've got 12 of these big two litres so I've had a huge chilli crop this year as you'll have seen um, so we should be able to do some really amazing ferments um, the great thing about this as well is rather than having to have them out and pay them attention every day burping them um, I'm going to put them somewhere uh, cool and dark um, and I'm just going to let them continue uh, fermenting. What this means as well is I can lay them down for a bit longer. I don't have to be giving them that daily attention. So um, it should be some really interesting ferments. Um, I also bought just when I was experimenting with this. This is a this is a, a fermentation jar by Kilner, um, which similarly has its own built-in valve. And I've not tried this before. And I think these were primarily made for kind of kimchi um, and fermenting vegetables, but it's the same principle. Um, so I've got two of these. Massive, excuse me, massive price difference here. I think these were something like 14 pounds for two, whereas the big, uh, the big two litre sun pet jars um, were for like 15 pound for six. So it's a big difference. Um, the other thing this comes with is a little weight so that you can put it on top of your ferment to stop it all rising up to the top. Which is, which is clever, but I'm doing this old school where I'm just gonna use 
the ramekins, and these are the kind of ramekins that you get with um, kind of yogurts and you know desserts in them for free. Um, so all you do with those is stick them on the top on the ferment to hold it down and stop it all rising to the surface. So it's exactly the same principle, just a very, very cheaper option. Um, so that's it for now. So I've got all of my fermenting kit ready, which is good. Uh, I've been to uh, Wilco, who I found to be the best source for jars for when the actual uh, for when the actual chilies made, sauces are made. Um, and this is the other thing that you need. This is a vital ingredient for doing your brine. Ooh. This is distilled water. So this is, there's a couple of different types of distilled water. This one, which is uh, also called Aquila Destillata, oh, distilled water, there's a surprise. Um, I got off of Amazon. Um, I think these were about yeah, £6 for three or thereabouts, you have to check. Um, this is really good. So this is distilled water. Um, you need to use distilled water for your brine rather than normal tap water because obviously it's cleaner and better. And you need to make sure you're using one that's a food grade. Uh, there's a lot of distilled water um, for medical purposes and stuff that you wouldn't really want to eat. So make sure you get a food grade one and this is going to be the basis for the brine that we use for the ferment. So that's pretty much everything's ready to go. Um, some other just bits and bobs. So we've got a really good um, sort of... Uh, Asian shop up the road, garlic and onions, cheap as chips, absolutely cheap as chips. Um, I bought a load of peppers with that, and that's, that was 10 quid, so this is just going to form a bit of a base. So there's other stuff in there apart from the chilies. Right, so that's, uh, that's enough for today. Um, it's probably going to be a few days before I get to actually do this, but I can't wait, and that'll be a, that'll be a proper chilli day. Cheers. We're um, back in the uh, top room here. Um, just take a quick look at the Carolina Reapers because they're still going. This crop has been unbelievable. I've never had um, a crop that's lasted this long. So if you can see, they're still fruiting and they're still really good and big. They're like the size of golf balls. There's not many left now. You can probably see a couple of them. Just see the red of them. Nice sunny day. A couple of them there. Uh, one at the top, oh, probably couldn't see anything there because of the sun. Um, and there's still a couple, see look in the background there, that are yet to ripen. So that's all good. Um, all my other chilies, as you know, I'd cut back um, and I've laid them down for the winter. But this thing's still producing, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it produce. I'm just going to let it completely crop out. But I've got one problem here. Um, it's not going to affect the fruits at all. But what I've got is I've got a nasty case of the aphids. These are little mite things. They're a real pain in the ass, And you can see them on this leaf. And they get this kind of sticky residue everywhere. You can see them in the soil and they're like literally coating everything. As I say, they're not gonna make any difference to the fruits. The chilies are all gonna be fine. This is just a, an infestation that lives on the plant leaves. So the way we'll deal with that is um, we'll cut these back when they're finished cropping so there's no foliage on them come right back into this v configuration and then i'm going to take all the soil away from them and give them completely fresh soil um, it's a bit of a high risk uh, gambit because it could kill them but i must get rid of this kind of aphid infestation um, yeah they're all looking good um, when i posted some pictures of my handful i took earlier in the week uh, Dickie, thank you Dickie, spotted something quite uncanny um, <laughs> in the picture which I will post directly at the end of this video. So there you go. A few more to get and um, very soon we'll be moving on to actually making the ferments.